And here in a few seconds, here we have it. We actually are in the call itself. And we can see we're running uh, Forsyth Video is what we're transmitting. And we're running Siren LP Audio, uh, which means we have excellent, uh, excellent air recovery, uh, though we won't see any packet loss because uh, this is all within my uh, lab. And you can see what kind of system we're connected to on the other end, which happens to be a, an HDX 9004. Uh, and we can sit there and watch the call and look for things to go wrong, like packet loss and things like that. Now, we can also go into the diagnostics, because right now I can't tell if somebody's talking. So what I can do is go into the microphone settings uh, of the diagnostics, the audio, and you can see there, the audio meters are actually moving. That means there's actually audio going through the system right now, okay? At least output on their side. Turns out I don't have anybody on the other end speaking, so I can't really um, figure out the audio up there's uh, uh, going on, but most likely it is. Uh, I also have the ability to do a speaker test. Now, warn people before you do this, because as you hear it, hopefully you hear that little tone. That tone on the other end can be pretty loud, so just be careful about that. And I can even send color bars if I want to uh, in this call. Uh, but that just gives you a quick little look at, at what you can do in the web interface, uh, and, and you can do almost anything. Uh, there over here in the utilities section, uh, I have something called uh, uh, some tools down here, and I can actually bring up a, a, a remote control as you can see right there, and I can control the FAR system if I wanted to. Uh, I can also do uh, remote monitoring. If uh, the web interface monitoring has been enabled, then that will actually show me uh, the uh, video on both sides. And actually on one side, you can see me there. Um, and that's about a seven to 10 second update. Uh, the room upstairs or where the other end is, is actually the uh, lights are turned off, so you can't see anything there. But anyway, that gives you an idea of what you can do uh, a very quickly, very quick run through of what can be done on the web interface. Uh, very handy, uh, very easy to use, very straightforward. So uh, uh, give it a shot, and I think you'll find that it can help you out. Thanks much. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Hi there, I'm Gary Miyakawa. I'm here to talk to you about the RMX product line from Polycom. That's our bridging products for video and audio conferencing. Uh, so we've got a, about an hour's worth of information to pass on to you. Hopefully that will help you understand our product line and be able to use it in appropriate fashion. Let's move to some slides so that we can walk our way through these. This will be more of a technical overview than a uh, sales overview. Uh, hopefully we'll go down the bits and bytes a little more than normal. Um, and so hopefully you, you technical people will find it a little more interesting. Hopefully I won't lose too many sales people in there. Uh, they'll find it interesting too. What is an MCU? Polycom has been developing MCUs for a number of years. Uh, the most current model is the RMX. Uh, MCU, what does MCU stand for? Multi-point control unit. Uh, and we have three products in that product line. Uh, one of them would be the 1500, that's the smallest one, then the 2000, and the largest one being the 4000. Uh, those units have been around, the 2000 started out about three years ago, and we added the 4000 shortly thereafter, and uh, early last year we came up with the 1500. Um, these bridging units allow us to bring multiple people into a call. Most cases, what you're used to is a point-to-point -point call like we're doing right now. In fact, this happens to be a point-to-point -point video call uh, to allow me to do the recording on the other end and combine my content there on the screen so you can see it. But what happens if I need to bring a third person into the call? I need some way to bridge those three people together. So what we have is a multi-point, multiple site bridge that allows people to come together uh, more than two. Uh, it'll bring two together, but typically it's for more than two uh, into a conference. What's the upper limit? 
Well, there, there are some mathematical limits, but realistically, uh, depending on how much money you want to spend on how many bridges, uh, it could literally be thousands of sites. Um, the complexity can get very high in that situation. The MCUs are required to bring those people in, and uh, what triggers an MCU to see who's speaking is typically the voice. Whoever is speaking the most and the loudest is the one that will be shown. Um, so it's very important that in a multi-point call, if you're not speaking, you be quiet so that other people can, can work through it. Uh, most multi-point control units, uh, at least within Polycom, work with almost all other vendors because we abide by the ITU H323 and H320 standards. Uh, that allows everyone to interconnect. Uh, I oftentimes laugh about the MCU and call it the great equalizer because that lets almost everybody come into a conference um, no matter what their uh, uh, hardware affiliation might be as long as they meet standards. Let's take a little look at what an actual call looks like when we, when we do a multi-point call. So what I have here is a, a group of systems there on the right. Um, some are connected through ISDN, some are connected through IP. And so what would initially happen, I'd pick up my remote control and I'd press the dial button with the right numbers and it would initially start a call as you see there. So I would dial into the conference, okay, and connect to it. And that would be called the call setup. Once I connect to it, once I connect to it, you're going to hear a message. I'm going to play Welcome that again. To unified conferencing. And it allows you to know that you're connected to the bridge. You've entered into an area called an entry queue, or a video lobby as we sometimes call it. Uh, that allows you to come in and then decide what meeting room you want to join at that point. Um, if you don't know the meeting room number, sometimes it will be displayed there depending on the design of the system. Uh, in some cases you must know what the meeting room number is so you know how to join it. Oftentimes it's done that way from a security standpoint. Now, once you know that, you use the DTMF pad off your remote control and you type in the appropriate meeting room number. Please enter your conference ID. Press the pound key when complete. So you do hit the little boop, 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 boops and hit the pound key and away you go. You be connected. Please enter your uh, conference ID. Well, Press the pound key. Yeah, most of the time you would unless you messed one of the numbers up, uh, which I obviously must have done. Uh, then once you uh, type in the appropriate number with the pound key for us at the end, it will connect you to the conference. You are the first person to join the conference. And that's a handy thing to know if you're, you know, if you don't hear that message, you know that there are other people. You may not see other people. Why would it be you wouldn't see other people? Well, you might not see them because they might be on a voice connection rather than on a video connection. Uh, we support both voice and video on our MCUs. Once you're connected, you get this lovely music that plays over and over and over again. Uh, it's really quite lovely the first couple hundred thousand times I've listened to it, uh, but now it's a bit old. I get people asking, say, well, can you change the music? Yes, we have a way to change the music. Well, can we delete the music? Well, certainly we can delete the music. But don't necessarily, you don't necessarily want to do that. Because that music tells me some things. It tells me nobody else is in the call. It also tells me that my speakers are working and that I have audio coming from the bridge. So it actually has been informative for me. So, so as much as we want to say, ah, oh, let's delete the music, eh, maybe you don't want to delete the music. We do have flags that allow us to change the volume of the music, so it's much more subtle. This came through pretty loud, but this is mainly a demonstration for you all. So, uh, you know, you might want to get rid of the music up front. So once you've done that and other people connect to the conference, you're in the call. And so you're in a multi-point call with potentially two to a hundred other people, okay? You don't really have any way to know uh, except for whoever's on the screen. And depending on what uh, bridge you're connected to, you can see up to 16 sites uh, on one conference. Now, anybody beyond 16 will rotate in if the uh, screens uh, allow it, and there's a parameter to allow it to happen. Um, 
you'll rotate in and take over one of the squares that's visible as you start to talk. Okay, when you stop talking, someone else takes your place and you get pushed down the line. Eventually, you get pushed off the screen. If there are more people in the conference, then we have squares on the screen. Yeah, okay. So, let's talk a little bit about some of the features for the 1500, the 2000, and the 4000. Now, I'm listing all the products there because they all work the same. They all have the same capability. They all run the same software. That's a very good thing for you all. Once you've learned how to run an RMX anything, 1500, 2000, 4000, you can run any of the others. The code, the, the web interface looks exactly the same. In fact, most of us who work on them, we can't even tell the difference without going into the hardware and start counting how many slots. Um, there's another place that will tell us whether it's a 1500, 2000, or 4000. But generally, when you're operating the bridge, you have no way to really notice it other than a 4000 will have up to four times the resources of a, a 1500. Uh, so, that being said, let's talk a little bit more about the uh, features we have. Uh, it supports a full line of video resolution all the way from SIF resolution which is a common interchange format, and that's our standard resolution that we've had around for years. Okay, the, the, VB, oh, shoot, the VSX supported SIF resolution. Uh, the older Tamburg products supported SIF resolution. Uh, so it's something that's been out there forever and ever. Um, and compared to a regular old glass TV, it is one quarter of the screen. Okay. Normally a glass TV has four of these panels in it, and we'll sometimes call that 4SIF. Another term for 4SIF is standard definition. That's really become more recently the, the nomenclature that people know it by. It's standard definition. Uh, so what you want to do is, or what you have is standard definition capabilities in our bridge. We also have the ability to do high definition, all the way up to 1080p 30. Uh, at this point in time, we don't support 1080p60, uh, but that's being looked in certainly for the future. Uh, Multi-point switching modes. We have several modes that we can switch in. We can switch full screen people. So you always see me full screen. And then when John over there talks, you see John full screen. Uh, when George talks, you see George full screen. Okay, And you see full screen people. That's one option. That's called video switched mode. Uh, that also uses very little resources out of the bridge. Uh, it's a very easy way to do distribution of, of calls, but there are some downsides. One is all calls have to be at exactly the same speed with the same resolution. Okay, so that means all systems need to be basically the same that have called in. Sometimes we can do that. A lot of times there are mixed manufacturers within one company uh, because of that you'll probably need to have something called transcoding and you'll probably need to run something called continuous presence. Continuous presence allows me to put multiple people for Polycom up to 16 on one screen at one time. And that works out very nicely. You can see everybody uh, at 16 people on the screen. It's kind of hard to recognize everybody. Fortunately, we put a little uh, banner around whoever is speaking so you can recognize who's actually doing the talking in a call. Uh, but we can handle up to 16 on there. Uh, and that's just called continuous presence. Now, any site can be at any speed when you're in a continuous presence call. Uh, and we will automatically transcode the speeds and the video resolutions so that they all work together. Um, and that means you don't have someone calling in at 128K pulling a, a very nice HD call down to its lowest common denominator. That's always a bad thing. So what we try to do is, is let everybody run at their natural speed and give you the best possible quality. Uh, we do fully support H.239, uh, that's the content sharing uh, standard, and that's what I'm using right now to show you my presentation. As you can see, it, it does a very nice job of it. Uh, we also support encryption, uh, AES encryption for the media streams. That allows us to protect those streams so that people can't sneak in and watch them. 
Um, with sniffer technology and being able to capture packets, uh, if you don't encrypt those packets, people can watch, um, rewatch.